And if you're like me, you cannot turn away from this. This is a fire NATO. Look at that. It's mesmerizing and ferocious. But, but why are we seeing so many? And why are they so dangerous? CNN meteorologist Indra Peterson joins us to explain this. Um, really weird. I mean, Carol, this is really something people literally cannot take their eyes off of. One of the things you need to realize is you have to have dry fuel for what we call a fire NATO. And unfortunately, California right now is experiencing one of its worst droughts in history. We're talking about the majority of the state already in extreme drought conditions. So why does that matter, right? You have all that dry fuel. Obviously, we have the drought conditions. So let's look at this animation. You think about a fire NATO. What do you need when you have a fire by itself? You already have the fire creating its own little eddies or own little winds here at the bottom. And you can't really see it. It's like these invisible funnel going all the way up but now counteracts that brush right what is brush it releases carbon carbon is combustible but it doesn't combust within this funnel right here why because there's no oxygen only when it gets all the way to the top and encounters the oxygen way up here does the entire thing combust and that's what you get is that entire line that we know of as a fire nato but think about this when you talk about the fire lines take a look at this animation these things can shoot up to a thousand feet high, Carol, and you cannot combat these flames directly, not within the fire NATO itself, because that's just kind of the gaseous substance inside of it. You have to fight around it. It goes as high as a thousand feet, right? It can jump the fire lines. And here's what people don't know. It's not like a tornado. It doesn't start from a supercell. However, it can produce winds as damaging as 120 miles per hour. That's kind of like the equivalent of an EF2 tornado. Wow. That's the problem. That is what is so hard on those fire lines. In addition to that, they've been dealing with record breaking heat. I want to tell you how bad this is, Carol. When you talk about temperatures being 25 degrees above the record above the record here not above average along the coastline that is what they've been dealing with in California conditions are improving why you've had this dome of high pressure the winds were squeezing through these canyons so in the canyons you were seeing winds even as high as 60 70 miles per hour so that's the problem the good news this high pressure is breaking down finally it's not really about those temperatures but all about the humidity they're seeing a hint of recovery today but once the marine layer comes back and you see the wind switch from off the ocean bring that cool air and more more importantly, the humidity back up. That's where we're going to have that huge change today, seeing a little bit of that humidity helping them out. But really, in through tomorrow, you're going to see that huge drop in temperatures near average. But more importantly, they could start to see that marine layer. It'll take some time, but throughout the weekend, conditions are going to drastically improve, Carol. Wow. Indra Peterson's many thanks.